Welcome to Radio Free Sunroof. This is Colibri's weekly column. <laughs> December 19th, 2020. The absurdity of online community. The first time I heard the phrase online community was back in the spring of 1991. I was a senior in college, and I had friends who spent lots of time in the computer lab, which in my memory was a dark room lit only by green screen CRT monitors, although I'm sure it was brighter than that. These were the days of BBSs and IRC. My friend told me about all the people he was interacting with, and he called it online community. In my head, I scoffed. That's impossible, I thought to myself. Community is something that can only happen in person. Nobody will ever believe in that. Little did I know. Recall that these were the days when you'd say that you, quote, met someone online. Not just that you'd met them. Talk was still in quotes then, too, for that matter. And we were over a decade away from, quote, friending. We used to know other things then, too. It was an article of common sense that telephone calls didn't count as full communication. It was understood that facial expressions and body language are essential components, and that without them, something significant is missing. That was nearly 30 years ago. Such an awareness seems nearly gone at this point. Now, most people actually seem to believe that online community is as legitimate as in-person community, or nearly so, rather than being the far, far cry that it is. We are selling ourselves way short. Of course, the online world is real in its own way. In a literal sense, it is a thing that exists. But far more is not there than is there. The whole thing is a virtual space, not a material one. We, on the contrary, are material creatures. We are elements, somehow animated by the energy of life, on a piece of dirt between deep waters and high clouds, and, and we are not alone. Though we might not be conscious of it, as material beings, we are in constant, intimate connection with the vast network of animals, plants, fungus, bacteria, and who knows what else, experiencing all of it together in a dynamic equilibrium. The computer conveys almost nothing of that. Nearly every detail of an online interaction is filled in by our imaginations. Additionally, the raw materials for our imaginations are increasingly sourced online. So we have a virtual world instructing us how to make a virtual world. It's mostly, like way mostly, not just a little bit mostly, in our heads. In terms of the physical, the online world is actually a flight of fancy. In person, the primary way of relating to reality, including to the other creatures in it, is with our senses. We are blessed with many, from the main five, sight, hearing, smell, sense, and taste, to others like temperature, space, and balance. We are all receiving a countless multitude of sensory signals every waking and sleeping moment, and they are registered by our consciousness within a mix that's always in flux. As we move, as we breathe, everything changes. Online, our senses are narrowed to a scant two or so, which are then abused through overstimulation. Our state of consciousness is similarly constricted to the narrow bandwidth that can translate to the crude medium. That a big chunk of that range can be well represented by just five emoticons is revealing AF. A great percentage of the population has embraced and internalized a serious delusion. My own relationship with it is more or less delusional in different moments, but aside from that, there is a cultural phenomenon that I cannot avoid, even if I stopped using it myself. Collectively, people have convinced themselves that poking at shapes and colors on screens is friendship or love or connection. But that's just not true. Abstract representations are all that's going on. We are missing out on the joys and the challenges, and the joys of challenges, that only face-to-face -face time offers, that only face-to-face -face time can offer. This is not to say that the internet has no utility. It functions pretty well as a giant reference library, though a critical eye is obviously a must. It also works for introducing people over distances. The more specific the shared interest, whether professional or hobby, the better. Gaming, obviously, is right at home. 
but it is a measure of the diseased state of our society that so many people now think about, talk about, and relate to the online world as if it were as real as the walking around world. This is without even getting into the corporate control of so much online space, especially social media. We're now about 70 years into what amounts to a national social experiment to see what happens when people focus on screens in their homes every single day for hours, and now also out of their homes everywhere, always in their hands. Civilized culture is basically a case of mass hypnosis already, that's true. But on top of that, we're pretending that a place in our heads is equivalent to a place where we can stand, look around, and participate with other forms of material life in miraculous interconnection. But the virtual is simply not the real. And that is that. If someone believes otherwise, they should go bang their head against a wall, touch a hot stove burner, or witness the death of an animal. Or, for that matter, pet a kitten, eat an ice cream cone, or have an orgasm. Oh yeah, there's a difference between online and IRL, and it ain't small. So I am sad. I know there are many lonely people trying to fill a basic human need, and they are settling for this fakery. Sometimes I'm one of them. But one might as well claim that double-tapping food porn on Instagram provides calories to a hungry body. It doesn't. It won't. It can't. We live in an era of crisis. We are threatened by war, tyranny, and environmental disaster. If the online world has a place to play in facing these things, it is very small. And the sooner we accept that and break out of our delusions, the better. If you enjoyed this reading today, please consider supporting me on Patreon at patreon.com slash colibri, K-O-L-L-I-B-R-I. To find out about the other podcasting I do, visit radiofreesunroot.com.